Before we talk about the Lionesses, we're interested to get your take on this as a, as a fan of the club. Uh, is this the outcome you expected? Yes, it's the one that I hoped for. If I'm being truly honest, I was at the game on Saturday in the away end against Tottenham Hotspur and I was thinking, you know, we're crying out for a player like Mason Greenwood in that number nine role. But for me, I heard Andy was talking about the morality of football now. And I, I think it'd be quite difficult for me to go to Manchester to watch Manchester United again if Mason Greenwood was playing. Now, he's one of the most technically gifted players I've seen at Manchester United, left foot, right foot. But the morals just doesn't sit right with me. So I'm glad that my club has done the right thing. And, and you know, when you support a team, you wear your heart on your sleeve. And it's a shame, but I, I am glad that it's come to this conclusion. And every time Manchester United seem to play... Mason Greenwood would trend on social media and those types of things. Some people want him to come back. And I think, where are the morals in this situation? It doesn't sit well with me. So I think it'd be quite difficult for me to go and watch Man United if he was playing, knowing everything that we saw. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it was a big talking point at, at Tottenham as well. I mean, taking the temperature of your fellow Manchester United fans, people you've spoken to, do you think broadly that that was the feeling of m most United fans? No, I don't, because I could hear kind of, you know, squirms from behind me talking about we're crying out for Greenwood. So there are going to be people that would think about the football inside and the morals will go out the window. It's football. Football fans can be quite fickle, can't they? And I agree with what you were saying previously. He'll have to go abroad for me, for this to be kind of... Because I think everywhere he goes to play, he'll always get the abuse, he'll always get judged. And, you know, at the end of the day, everyone makes mistakes. We all do in life. Everyone has to have the opportunity to make it better. I've no doubt he will do that, but I'm certainly delighted I would say that Manchester United have done this because it shows you what our football club is about and mm. you know I actually have a Mason Greenwood match worn jersey that I got given a couple of years ago and you know I'm not even taking it out of the bag to be honest since that whole thing happened it's just never been never sat well with me I was just saying yeah, it's going to be very, I mean it's a global village I take the idea of him going abroad but you know we've seen so players broadly in similar situation find it very difficult there to pick up. There are very their... few places he could go. You know, it's it's it's, it's going it's going to be look, it's going to be a, a rocky road for the player and indeed any club that is prepared to take him on. It is, but I actually believe someone will. Um, I don't think this is it for Mason Greenwood. I do agree with what you're saying. It will be difficult and it'll be a rocky road, but there's always going to be somebody that will promise you they will so I'm only going to focus on the fact that Manchester United have done what I think is the right thing there was all these rumours last week about them talking about leaving it to the women's team which I think is it's really a farcical that is not yeah, true you honestly right. believe that going to the training ground asking the women's team if Mason Greenwood should come back and this has been a rumour for a number of like weeks now people ask me that question and it gets on my nerves mm. so you know now that this has all gone out the window and we can finally you know draw a line under it and move on yeah, I mean that was grossly unfair, and the idea that they would, if, if that ever came to that, which I doubt it would, they would, they would have every right to say, "Don't ask me to make your difficult decisions for you." No, don't put me in that situation. And hopefully, mm. it didn't happen. Just let's just want to play something Simon Jordan just said to us. We were chatting to Simon just now, Leanne, and he he said that Mason Greenwood should be given the opportunity to rehabilitate. My take on it is, mm. is that there will be a a solution where. The young man, of course, his statement will be drafted by his PR guys um, and made sure that it ticks every single box and every aspect of the observations that he should be making to try and find some way to redeem himself, to try and find some way to rehabilitate himself. If the alleged victim isn't prepared to prosecute the charges, and we can all have supposition as to why that may be the case, but if she's not prepared to, to, to prosecute for her own reasons then I do think it's not necessarily the right of everybody else to do so. This young man has a right to rehabilitate himself. If, he has, if his behaviour has been, in his own mind, has been so reprehensible that he needs to rehabilitate himself, he should be given that opportunity. And his career is football. Simon Jordan, mm. just now. Um, Mason Greenwood, Leanne, does say, I, I want to be, I intend to be a, a better uh, father, a better person, to use my talents in a positive way and off the field. What do you think of Simon's take on that? Yeah, I mean, everybody has an opportunity to rehabilitate. I don't disagree with Simon in that sense, but I'm happy that Mason Green was going to be doing that away from Manchester United and away from my club. You know, obviously everyone has, is, this was so public that everybody made their own judgments before it even went to any type of, you know, court mm. case thing like that. And that was the problem in itself. So I think everybody has an opportunity to make things better because this was so public. It was always going to be. I'm glad this is the outcome because part of me felt like this was going to be the outcome. Rehabilitate him absolutely, but I don't want him at Manchester United doing that. 
Thanks for that, yeah. Leanne. We, we, we're going to move Fair on enough. to the, the Lionesses. And uh, Adrian got in touch earlier on. Andy felt that um, that uh, the performance maybe had been swept under the carpet in, among, amidst all the euphoria. But yourself and Adrian were critical yesterday of, of the tactics and the team selection and a bit of a wasted opportunity for the Lionesses. Absolutely. I think, you know, the Lionesses have done fantastically well. And I think it's important to say that, you know, extreme pride. But I think... Definitely, we just we just didn't look at it at all. First and second to absolutely everything, you know. Um, Spain were they were quality all over the field to play better all over the field, and the occasion looked like it got the better of us. We did dissect it. I love Serena Vigman. You know, you don't become a bad coach overnight, as cliche as that sounds. And I think people still definitely want her. And I know the saying today has been two back to back World Cup losses with the Netherlands and England. But it's important to remember she's got there with teams that had no right to even be there. You know, individually. So. I think with regards to the performance and the substitutions, that is the problem for me. During the game, I was trying not to harp on about it and we'll dissect it after I said, but bringing off Alessia Russo and Rachel Daly at half-time made absolutely no sense. Mm. Absolutely no sense. What would you have done? I mean, would you have, you would have brought Lauren James on and, 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 and what would you, you would have kept Russo on? She wasn't having her greatest game. She did look nervous. The ball wasn't sticking, was it? Yeah, but nobody was having their greatest game, to be fair. I mean, I personally would have started Lauren James. I think this whole agenda before was that she can't start because she got that red card. I mean, I said it if it was in the men's game and Harry Kane got a red card or Declan Rice or Wayne Rooney, they'd come straight back into the final. Can you imagine if there was a final, one of our most best players wasn't playing? So it didn't work yesterday. Keeping that same 11 against a better team didn't work. We haven't had the best performances during this tournament, but we've got to the final. We topped the group, and I think you make your own luck in football. But I think Lauren James should have started the game. We saw when we brought her and Chloe Kelly on, the team looked flat, mm. and the occasion, the girls looked leggy, and the game looked like the occasion looked like it got the better of them. And sometimes mm. these things can happen. You know, against Colombia, we did it against Australia in the same stadium. So I was thinking there's a good feeling about this. But I said, this game was winnable beforehand, but I don't think people were really taking Spain seriously because of all the issues they've had off the field of play, 12 of their players. There was obviously talking about the coach, players not liking him and those types of things. But ultimately, quality in football always shines through. We can talk about tactics, three back, four back, but if you have individuals that are not at it and you've got players, but Bob Matti, Paraluelo, you know, the list can go on. Carmona, fantastic goal. And my heart goes out to her actually scoring the winning goal in a World Cup final and her father passed away. You know, so that's really devastating for her. So I think, you know, Spain deserved it. Credit to them. They were better than us. And sometimes you have to hold your hands up high and say that. Mm, sure. Yeah, what you're saying is refreshingly honest, I think, because so much of the coverage today is, you know, oh, uh, yeah, of course they did well getting to the final. And we've really loved the whole tournament. It's been great. But you have to call a spade a spade, don't you? You have to say that they didn't turn up on the big day. And everything you said there, I couldn't disagree with a word. Yeah, Andy, I think you're completely right. I think this is where we want the women's game to be. You know, I was critical of Ella Toon in the first two or three games. And then people were saying, oh, you know, that's quite harsh. It's like, we want the women's game to keep continuing to grow. I want people like yourself to critique and also praise. That's exactly where I've wanted the women's game to be. I don't want men to be so worried about talking about the women's game. I think they were before because they'd be accused of certain things. And there are men out there that are still sceptical, which I can't quite understand. But at the same time, critique the game say what you see and that's all we can really do and I'm glad that you guys are talking about it and saying what we could have done that's what we do on talk sport we talk about the men's game constantly so let's talk about the women's game you know Adrian and Trevor Sinclair did a phone in like a couple of weeks ago I thought it was brilliant people could phone in and talk about the women's world cup um, I, I, let's have a word for Mary Earp so it was an individual award the golden gloves and she pulled off a couple of great saves yesterday mm. she, she is she is some keeper isn't she she is, and the confidence and that arrogance that she has, I absolutely love it. You know, you could see what it meant to her when she saved that penalty. And she knew exactly where Jenny Hermoso was going. You know, the anticipation. If Jenny Hermoso would have done a bit of a Jorginho and had a look and waited for Mary Earps to go, she could have probably slotted it the other corner. Easier, easier said than done. But Mary Earps anticipated this, knew exactly where she was going. And as Sam Matterface has said, Mary Queen of Stops, absolutely brilliant. This one will hurt, though. You know, you, you don't want to, you want to get the golden glove and you want to get all the accolades. But when you lose a game like this, I said, it won't be a matter of days, weeks. It won't be months and years where you think about these things. I still remember when I lost in the semi-final of the FA Cup and that was 15 years ago and that was, you know, only once. I can't even imagine what it must feel like when you lose a World Cup final in that way. Yeah, well, Liam, really appreciate you joining us. Thanks, Liam. Thanks very much. We'll catch up with you soon. Take care. Thank you. 
Paul Hawksby and Andy Jacobs. Monday to Friday afternoons, 1 till 4. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.